Hi, I'm Jackson Gay. And I'm Victoria White. Get ready, Wes Broward. Because Bobcat Broadcast starts now. The unification of the community, the sheer diversity of cultures and holidays, and all-around cheer is what makes December one of the best months of the year. That's right. On today's show, we'll take a look at how a breast cancer survivor used her passion of crafting to overcome her hardships, the Southwest Ranch's Chili Festival, and how its communities joined together to spread cheer through fun events and giving back, and why it's important to be educated on holidays you don't celebrate, how to make hot chocolate bombs is the perfect gift or treat for someone this season, and how a nonprofit foster care takes time out of their lives to help bunnies and guinea pigs keep theirs. Now, let's check in on a woman whose experience with breast cancer and love for handmade crafts allowed her to take on a new worldview. I'm a crafty person since when I was a kid. On my grandma's old treadle sewing machine, my first patch of quilt. I'm a sewer since I was a little kid, eight, nine years old, my first sewing machine. And I've done it, I've made all my kids' clothes and everything, and then, like I said, I got sick uh, February of 20 for breast cancer. And this keeps your mind going because you have to concentrate on your lines, the fabric, the way the bowl is going to end up. So it's it really relieves your mind. And I enjoy doing it. It's something I really enjoy doing. I make quilts, I make afghans, tote bags, crossbody bags. But it really keeps me busy. I enjoy doing it. She bought a bunch of these um, rooster bowls. As a matter of fact, I met a woman who was interested in this when I was at Miranda Farms. And we got together through Facebook. I'm from Connecticut, she's from Massachusetts. She's going through the same thing that I went through with the breast cancer. And I've never met her been three months. I finally met her last Saturday at one of my shows and it was amazing. She thanked me for being there for her and helping her and then she sent me an email later that day and said that she loved her baskets that she bought but she also loved talking to me and brought her life into perspective. Sometimes you lose where you are when all this stuff's going on and now her life she knows what's going on you know. And I helped a lot of people. I talk about it because I don't remember half the stuff I went through. But it's nice to help other people. It comes to me at heart. Sometimes, things as small as food can really turn an entire community from acquaintances into family. The Southwest Ranch's Chili Festival is undeniable proof of this, as it annually unites its community through fun events and giving back in order to spread joy. Let's let the community express its own high spirits through this tradition. Again, I'd like to thank everyone for showing up. Enjoy today, enjoy the holiday season. Welcome to the ninth annual South Florida Chili Festival. This is uh, presented by the Southwest Ranches Parks Foundation. We do it every year to raise money for the improvements for the town's parks. We uh, incorporate a chili tasting, which is judged by the public with 14 chili cooks. We have a car show that has 150 or so classic cars. We have vendor booths, food trucks, kid zones, pony rides. It's a great event. This is the greatest time of year to do, to do an event. It's South Florida, it's the second week of December. We have vendors here selling specialty goods for Christmas and Hanukkah and all the holidays. And it's our chance to invite them to join us in the celebration. And it's our way of giving back to the town of Southwest Ranches who's been so great over the years to us. We love these events right around the holiday time because it's an opportunity for everyone and residents and neighbors to come together and uh, us as police officers, it's all about community policing and getting to know um, you know, our, our residents and so uh, we're, we're happy about that and we're only just a few weeks from Christmas and this is a time where it's about coming together, I mean, you know, it's, it's about the spreading joy. I think it's a beautiful turnout and to see the people gather like we are, you know, it's long overdue and it's a blessing. One love, all I can say is one love. One love, ain't nothing like, ain't nothing like one love. We all got to have the same goals, 
same drive to share peaceful and to have love for one another. No room for hatred. Well, with me being a veteran, I had two knee replacements. So I had to make a choice, be my own boss or I lay down. So here I am, right off the bone. Wow, that chili really does add flavor to these people's lives. You're right. I might have to stop by next year to get a better taste for myself. On that note, it seems like it's time for a break. When we return, we'll take a look at why you should know a thing or two about all the holidays this month brings, even if you don't take part in it. dollar each. Wait, a dollar? Can I get one? You don't have a dollar? I don't have a dollar. You're only a dollar. You don't have a dollar on you? I don't know. Welcome back. Although Christmas holds a special place in all of our hearts, December brings such a large quantity of unappreciated holidays alongside with it. It's important to be educated on these holidays because it really allows us to develop and appreciate an understanding of what's important to the people in our community. Matthew Millian can tell us more. Happy Holidays. Winter is most known for spending time with your family and friends to celebrate your festivities. Though it's important to enjoy your cold season, it's also important to be educated on the other celebrations that are occurring. As you can see, the decorations surrounding me are Christmas themed. However, wouldn't it be nice to know about other holidays that share this month? Now, generally, you only hear about the common two or three, but with so many different beliefs and traditions, there's always something to learn about. For example, St. Lucia Day is a holiday on December 13th. It commemorates St. Lucia, who would secretly bring food to the Christians hiding in Roman catacombs under the city. To honor her today, girls in Sweden dress up as Lucia brides in long white gowns with red sashes and a wreath of burning candles on their heads. VogueScandinavia.com informs us what they wear symbolizes St. Lucia's role as a bringer of light to a world in the depths of the winter season. That's just one of the several holidays in winter that also has strong cultural significance, but unfortunately isn't talked about or taught as much. Everyone you meet is bound to have different cultural backgrounds, which is one of the reasons why it's important to be informed on as many holidays as you can. Meeting new people and talking to them about their culture is a great way to adapt to new knowledge and should be essential as this holiday season approaches. But if you're yet to meet someone to celebrate a holiday you aren't educated on, take some time to do some research on some that you haven't heard of. For Bobcat Broadcast, this has been Matthew Millian reporting. It's important to never forget that one of the highlights of the holiday season is the act of giving. Instead of giving Santa a warm glass of milk, why not throw in a nice hot chocolate bomb in there to add some flavor? 
It makes the perfect treat and gift for someone special this time. Anna Pettigene can give you the recipe. Hey guys, it's Anna and today we're going to be making hot chocolate bombs. Not only are they quick and easy, but they are delicious and a great gift to give to your friends and family this holiday season. Let's get started. First, we're going to grab our two cups of milk or dark chocolate, depending on your preference, and pop it in the microwave for one minute. After that, we're going to microwave on 30 second intervals until it's nice and smooth. Now that the chocolate is all nice and melted, we're going to put them in our circular molds. You can find this at your local craft store or the baking aisle. Now that the chocolate is all in the mold, we're going to let this set in the fridge for around 10 to 15 minutes. In the meantime, we're going to go ahead and grab our candy canes and put them in a Ziploc bag and just crush them up. So now that we have our hot chocolate shells, we're going to go ahead and put all the ingredients in the hot chocolate. That being the hot chocolate mix, the marshmallows, and the crushed candy canes. Now taking one half of the chocolate bomb, we're going to melt the edges on a pan on low heat and put them together. Repeat those steps for as many times as you'd like depending on how many you want to make. But once you're done, you're going to grab your white chocolate and melt it just like we did with the milk chocolate and drizzle it on top. Well, and there we have our hot chocolate bombs. To use, just warm up some milk, drop the hot chocolate bomb in, and stir. Thank you guys so much for watching, and happy holidays. Cheers. I can't say I've ever seen a chocolate bomb before, but it looks amazing. And just like how a chocolate bomb can save a meal, Penny and Wild goes out of their way to save the lives of guinea pigs and rabbits. Let's find out more by passing it to Chloe Martin. Usually, when you hear about animal foster care organizations, what immediately comes to mind is dogs and cats. But here at Penning Wild South Florida Animal Rescue, they have something a little different in mind. However, the animals they take care of isn't the only different thing about this organization. It is completely nonprofit and specifically emphasizes hard cases. Penny and Wild is a small animal rescue. We specifically rescue rabbits and guinea pigs, but we do occasionally rescue other small mammals. We tend to emphasize taking medical cases and euthanasia lists and strays, so we don't take as many owner surrenders as most rescues do, but we do help with the rabbits and the guinea pigs who have no other place to go and usually don't get a second chance. I first started rescue when I was 12. I got my when I was 12. I first started rescue when I was 10. I got my first pet rabbit then and when I was looking for a friend for her I did encounter a hoarding situation where I took a couple of rabbits home. I wound up having a litter that had to be bottle fed and we wound up getting calls about a couple of other rabbits and I had a small rescue on my hands at that point. Um, I was able to find home for all of the rabbits and I did decide to lay low for a couple of years because I was younger and enjoying my own pets. But as I got a little bit older, we wound up getting more and more calls and I wound up helping more and more rabbits until we started this rescue here. Struggles are bound to happen. However, their motivation towards saving these small animals has them pushing through any obstacles. With the support they receive, people from anywhere can donate food and supplies while also being able to foster them, making room for more bunnies and guinea pigs to be fostered, while gaining service hours in the process. Financially, we definitely rely on our supporters and our donors that help us out. Um, we do tend to do all right with spays and neuters, but since we are so focused on helping the medical cases, all of the excess medical bills, the donors help a lot to pay those off. They're definitely the reason that we're able to do what we do. As for motivation, the reason that we founded this rescue in the first place was so that we would be able to help the rabbits and guinea pigs who didn't have a second chance, those rabbits that were pulling out of bushes, out of swamps, that are hit by cars, that are on the streets. 
So every time we may get tired or we may think that we're full and we don't have any space, when we get the next call about an animal who is in immediate danger, we are immediately off to help that animal. Organizations like these show the good in people, one of the few places that prioritizes care over profit. They accept animals regardless of whether they can collect a rescue fee or not. The priority is and will always be the care and well-being of the animal, dropping everything for the next urgent call. It's not exactly a 9-to-5 job, it's a 24-7, 365, all-encompassing life. Their dedication and compassion is unmatched. This has been Chloe Martin, reporting. Well, that just about wraps it up for this month's episode. Make sure to tune in to next month's installment. Thanks for watching. I'm Jackson Gay. And I'm Victoria White. Have a great day.